Hello everyone, I'm back. Uh, I didn't think I'd be doing any videos today since uh, I just got back from Dubrovnik, but uh, I thought uh, since so many of you have requested this game uh, while I've been on vacation, I still have uh, an hour before the game uh, <laughs> Croatia versus England, uh, the soccer match of course. Uh, so I thought uh, best best to do this game now and then uh, think about uh, what other videos to show tomorrow. So uh, before we check out the game, I do have some very exciting photos for you. Uh, we can also use them as a photo challenge as there haven't been a lot of photo challenges since I've been away. So let's check it out. They're all quite outstanding. Uh, they were uh, they were made by uh, God and Dorit Ritvo from Ritvo Photography. I will put a lot, uh, all of the <laughs> links to some, uh, some of their works in the description below uh, as well as uh, uh, to the event in question. Uh, <laughs> so you can check out uh, some more photos uh, and some interesting interviews like uh, an interview with the event winner, winner uh, Jan Nepomniashi, and there is also an interesting interview with Vasily Vanchuk, and so on and so on. So uh, you can, you know, just uh, check out the photos and uh, try to recognize as many people as possible. So here we have a nice, nice photo. There, let's check out another one. Uh, there you have it. Now let's uh, <laughs> check another one. Uh, also a very nice photo and here uh, like I said in my other social media this is the photo uh, that you know uh, sets the awesomeness bar for all other photos uh, so here it is <laughs> uh, for, for all of us to marvel at it very nice and uh, for the for the real photo challenge for this video since everything is you know so colorful and the summaries here uh, who is this who is the person in this photo so there you have it uh, to give you a little bit uh, of help, uh, it's, uh, it's the 2016 World Chess Championship Challenger uh, riding a big pink bird, so best of, best of luck to everyone. Uh, now, uh, getting back to our game. It's uh, Wesley So with the white pieces against Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. Uh, the game was played in the Leon Masters 2018 and uh, it, it was uh, a four-game match. So this is, uh, <clears throat> this is the game from round one. And we do have a couple of photos uh, of this event. So here we have a nice photo of Prago uh, pre before the game. Uh, also, we have a nice photo of Wesley. Uh, so let's check it out. Sorry about that. Uh, Wesley has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now knight to c3. When you see a move like knight to c3, uh, bringing the knight into the game before actually uh, opening uh, opening the c-pawn, uh, even the really old chess masters like Philidor or Steinitz will tell you that th this is not the way to play chess. Uh, but in modern times anything is possible and Wesley wants to create something uh, something new on the board that uh, will perhaps confuse uh, young, young Prago as this is a rapid event. And it's uh, fair to say that... Uh, uh, at the time this game was played, uh, Wesley So was rated over 100 ELO points uh, above Prago. I believe Wesley was somewhere around 2780 and Prago was uh, 1600 and something. As, uh, it seems like Prago never played uh, rapid events uh, for, for ELO points. Uh, we have d5, uh, bishop to f4 and now bishop to f5. Knight to b5. Here Wesley is going for the c7 pawn and it's been a while so I forgot to... Uh, to reduce the volume, uh, knight to b5 going after the c7 pawn and now knight to a6. And uh, by playing this knight to b5 move, Wesley now gains time uh, to move the c pawn. Uh, first e3, we have e6 and now c4. Uh, bishop to e7, and uh, in game number three, uh, instead of bishop to e7, Prago went for c6, uh, as he, he obviously found that it was an improvement to bishop to e7. Uh, but okay, a3, we have castles, uh, c5 now, c5 grabbing more space, uh, but kind of neglecting development, so you do have... Uh, Probably black can take advantage of this, but in a rapid game, you know, nothing is simple. Uh, here Prago goes knight to e8. Here ideas like maybe f6, e5 are possible, uh, you know, or, or trying to overload the, the, the central pawn as then the c pawn would become a weakness. Uh, we have b4, solidifying the queen side. Now comes c6, kicking the knight back, knight c3, uh, and now comes knight to b8. So first knight e8, now knight to b8, uh, you all know, uh, you know, uh, Ivanchuk did say that uh, the hardest move to find is with the knight back, so obviously playing two moves with the knight back, uh, that that must be something excellent. Uh, and here we have g4. Uh, Wesley starts his kingside expansion and his attack uh, on Prague's king. Uh, bishop to g6 and now knight to f3. Uh, you want to play h4, although you can't play h4 immediately. Both queen and the bishop are guarding h4. 
So uh, now that knight to f3 has been played, h4 and h5 uh, is definitely a threat. Uh, we have knight to f6, now attacking the g4 pawn, and now knight to e5, defending the g4 pawn. Uh, but also attacking the bishop on g6. Here, the sacrifice with h4, uh, threatening h5, doesn't really work, because after knight captures h5, uh, bishop uh, can calmly come to f5, and now h6 will be met with the g6, and white didn't really achieve anything here, basically just blundered the pawn. Uh, but okay, after knight to f6, we have knight to e5, now defending the g4 pawn, and also attacking the bishop on g6. Uh, knight f to d7, uh, offering to, to trade knights, and here comes knight captures on g6. And uh, well, here, of course, most of the times you want to capture towards the center, as this improves your, uh, you know, central pawn structure. Uh, but here, Prague plays f captures on g6, he opens up his rook on f8, and now it's uh, the game takes a completely different character. Uh, Wesley plays bishop to g3, now preparing ideas like f4 or h4, and Prague immediately stops this, he plays g5, not allowing f4 or h4. Bishop to d3, now, uh, if this g pawn ever moves, then the bishop is nicely eyeing that h7 pawn, queen to h5 could be an idea. So, okay, bishop to f6, uh, Prague still continues with his uh, plan as this knight to d7 was played, e5 is the move Prague wants to play. Uh, we have h4 here. Uh, pawn captures on h4 and now comes bishop to d6. So okay, a temporary pawn sacrificed by Wesley, he attacks the rook on f8 and uh, this is uh, this was Wesley's idea. He thought after bishop after rook comes to f7, uh, his idea was g5 attacking the bishop and after bishop captures, now queen g4. Uh, complete mobilizations uh, for the price of two pawns, uh, king e2 is coming, the other rook is coming to g1. So this would be this would be an excellent attack by Wesley. Uh, but here Prago isn't interested in material, he goes for the old, <laughs> old Morphy idea, uh, you know, uh, development uh, ahead of material. And he decides to sacrifice the exchange. He plays e5. And here, okay, you can capture the rook immediately. If you play bishop captures, knight captures, uh, and then after pawn captures, bishop captures, you can play queen b3, defend the knight on c3, uh, and after a5, the game continues. Uh, white, can, white won't really be safe either on the queen side or on the king side, uh, but, you know, uh, he is up the exchange, but it's it's not very pleasant for white. Uh, so instead, after e5, Wesley plays the correct idea. He plays g5, uh, sacrifices yet another pawn, uh, bishop captures on g5, and this is where Wesley goes wrong. He plays queen h5 immediately, threatening, of course, uh, bishop captures on h7. Uh, but instead, uh, he should have went for d captures on e5. And now you, you really see the problem. Now the rook is still under attack. And now you can't even play rook to f7 because then e6 will be a terrible threat. Uh, so now you have to continue with something like g6 where then uh, white can either continue with the attack with f4. White can even capture the rook. Uh, but if you try to save the rook then queen to h5 will be a terrible threat. After you defend this, bishop to h6. Uh, then comes rook g1. The threat now is of course queen captures. After bishop blocks, bishop f5. Uh, and now black will lose the lose the exchange and the white will have a much better position. C captures and again this is this is a threat you have to move the king and now this this is coming and this is only one line that shows uh, how 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 much better white is here. Uh, but here Wesley went for the immediate queen to h5 and uh, okay I'm sure he saw what was coming. Uh, Prague immediately went for e4 which is of course the strongest move uh, and Wesley went for knight captures on e4. Pawn captures so a peace sacrifice and now uh, bishop to c4 check. King moves and now comes bishop captures on f8. Queen ca uh, first g6 not capturing immediately uh, kicking the queen back. Queen to g4 and now comes knight captures on f8. Queen captures on e4 and queen to e7. Prague now immediately offers a trade of queens. Uh, queen captures, bishop captures, and now king to e2. Uh, Wesley brings the king into the game and prepares to bring the rook into the game. And uh, what's uh, what's the standing now after <laughs> after all is said and done? Uh, here if you count the pawns, it's 6 pawns black, 6 pawns white. Uh, but one thing you can see is that uh, Prago has a, uh, a bishop and a knight for Wesley's rook. So uh, however you put this, black is better here. Uh, g5, we have rook a to b1. Uh, a6 now, preventing b5. Uh, d5 now, pawn captures, bishop captures, and knight to c6. Uh, we have rook to d1, uh, rook to b8, now the knight can move as the b7 pawn is, will no longer be attacked from the bishop. Uh, bishop to e4, and now king to g8, uh, king to g7. 
b5 now, pawn captures, rook captures, and here knight to a7. Uh, uh, Prago finds a way to simplify. Rook captures, rook captures, bishop captures, and bishop captures on c5. So still, uh, Prago has uh, a knight and a bishop for a rook, but Wesley has this very strong passed a pawn. So it's not, not all that clear. And uh, another thing that's interesting, since this was a rapid game, uh, <laughs> uh, Pragnananda had uh, about 10 seconds on the clock. Uh, at the time this position was on the board on move 36. So uh, Wesley pushes a4, we have king to f6, bishop to e4 now, uh, threatening the h7 pawn if the knight ever moves. So h6, uh, removing the target, rook to d5, attacking the bishop, uh, knight to e6, defending the bishop, and now rook to f5 check. King moves, and now bishop to, uh, bishop to d5, threatening bishop captures, and then rook captures bishop. So bishop to d6, getting the bishop out of the way, uh, a5 now, further pushing the pass pawn, uh, h3, uh, and now king to f3. You do have to stop the h pawn, of course. Uh, we have h5, and here, uh, although oh, Prague, Prague is still better here, he should probably wait, uh, but uh, with, with so little time on the clock, uh, there, there's no time to wait. He wants to make something happen, he pushes h5. And this, of course, loses some material. We have bishop captures, uh, now comes g4 with check, uh, king to e4, and now king captures on e6. And now rook captures uh, on h5. Uh, h2, and now rook to h6 check. King to e7, now comes king to d5, uh, bishop to c7, and now a6. So, okay, uh, Prague has a very strong passed h pawn, and the bishop on c7 is guarding it nicely, but the rook can never really uh, leave the h file as it has to prevent this pawn from ever reaching h1. So, still, a lot of things can happen here. Uh, we have king to f7, now comes e4, uh, start, uh, Wesley starts to push his passed e pawn, and the e5 is definitely a big threat. Now, uh, if e5 is uh, pushed, then the bishop will no longer be guarding the h2 pawn, and then rook will be able to capture it. Uh, we have king to g7 attacking the rook, rook to h5, and now king to g6, again attacking the rook. Uh, rook to h8, and here uh, here Prago played king to f6, he prevented Wesley from playing uh, e5, as now both bishop and king are guarding the e5 square, uh, but although uh, this isn't... Uh, like, this isn't a mistake or anything, but uh, there is a one move that immediately wins the game for Prago. So, okay, he had a couple of seconds on the clock, so there's no real way for him to find it. Uh, but, you know, uh, you are comfortable at home uh, in your own uh, seats in front of your computer or, you know, in front of a smartphone. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and find the move that wins the game instantly for black. You know, give it a couple of seconds. It's not, it's not like, uh, real, real simple. So, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent endgame player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is bishop to f4. Now that you've seen it, of course, it all makes sense, because now you see that the threat is bishop to h6, simply blocking the rook's uh, defense uh, of the h-pawn, and after bishop comes to h6, then h1 wins the game. So, of course, black white would have to react to this. You have to play rook to h4, not allowing the bishop to block it, but then comes uh, king g5, attacking the rook. Uh, rook to h8, and now comes g3. This is the move you had to find, to find this variation, sacrificing the pawn. Uh, pawn captures, bishop captures, and now after, well, it doesn't matter what move white plays, black's plan is, uh, again, very simple. Rook, uh, uh, bishop is coming to h4, blocking the rook's uh, attack uh, of the h2 pawn. So after any move by white, uh, bishop to h4 is coming, and after a couple of checks, you will hide your king, and now it's game over, as h1 uh, will win the game. Uh, but okay, uh, congratulations once again to those of you who found bishop to f4. Uh, in the game, Prago was very low on time, he played king to f6, he prevented e5. Uh, king to c5 was played by Wesley, and now king to g5. We have king to d4, and now uh, Prago played bishop to b6 check. Uh, again, uh, g3 was winning, because f captures, bishop captures, again we have this idea of bishop to h4. Uh, but it's, uh, you know... Uh, little time on the clock, uh, such blindness can happen. Uh, bishop to b6 check, we have king d5, bishop captures on f2, rook captures, and now g3. But defending the bishop, uh, attacking the rook, forcing the rook to move back. Uh, rook to h8, and now knight to b5. Rook to g8 check, king to f4, rook to f8 check, king to e3, and now uh, e5. Wesley again starts pushing his pass pawn. Uh, g2, Prague also pushes his pass pawn, and now rook to g8. 
uh, attacking the pass pawn. King to f3 defending, and here, uh, as uh, uh, Prago did have two moments of, uh, of blindness over the board, uh, here comes a moment of blindness for Wesley as well, as it is a rapid game. Uh, king to c6. Uh, with, uh, with rook captures, uh, the game could have been drawn after king captures. Uh, king to c6 is coming, and with, uh, with two pass pawns, it's, it's, it's an easily drawn game. Uh, but here, king to c6 was played, and here, of course, uh, you all see the move Wesley missed, the bishop to g3, simply blocking the rook's attack of the pawn. Uh, e6 was played, now comes g1 queen, and after e7, knight to c7 was played, uh, there's really nothing more to do here, and uh, it was in this position that Wesley so resigned the game. So, a very nice game, uh, and even, uh, okay, it's a nice idea, but uh, rook captures, queen captures, and now a7 doesn't work. Okay, it seems like uh, either pawn after it's pushed, then the other pawn will become a queen, uh, but there is this queen to e5 move. Still defending the knight, uh, defending the pawn, and everything is fine. After you try anything, king d7, trying to promote, uh, then queen a5, defending the knight, defending the pawn, and after white does win the knight, then queen to, queen to, eight, queen to e8 will simply block the pawn, and all is well. So yeah, uh, after knight to c7, uh, Wesley so resigned the game, and uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda takes the lead in this match, 1-0. Uh, in the other game, uh, Wesley so uh, won the game, uh, but it was also... Uh, Prago, Prago did have a better position, but at some point, uh, you know, uh, he blundered and then Wesley took the whole point. Uh, game number three was drawn and then uh, Wesley also won game number four. So the match went to Wesley so, but, uh, you know, it's it was definitely a, a beautiful game and a nice start for, for the young Grandmaster. So yeah, uh, definitely, like, like I said, uh, <laughs> he was uh, less uh, over uh, uh, over a thousand uh, ELO points higher rated than Prago at the time this game was played. So uh, the the match ended two and a half uh, t uh, towards one and a half in Wesley's favor. So surely uh, also a nice ELO boost for for young Prago. So yeah, uh, once again, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, after the game, uh, I did uh, see on social media while I was, you know, enjoying myself uh, on the beach uh, in Dubrovnik, uh, Wesley also invited young Prago to have dinner with him. So also a very nice, uh, nice gesture by Wesley. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Jamie Steiner, Pietro Masella, uh, Nicholas Miller, Zach Linton and uh, David Weinraub for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, more of you have contributed to my channel while I was on vacation, but uh, my interface allows only for five of you. Uh, so uh, I will have to thank the rest of you in my next video. So yeah, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, with a couple of interesting videos. And uh, I think from next Monday, we are starting the Bobby Fischer series. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm off to the game. Uh, best of luck to England. But uh, of course, I hope Croatia will win. So yeah, see you soon.